Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the best Guts theme build. Honestly, I'm not sure if what I discovered is a bug or something else no one has noticed in the game or people are just not talking about it, but it's pretty wild. This build is heavily strength focused, but it can somehow proc a blood loss with 1-2 to two attacks easily. Again, it's a strength build, it has no business at all proccing blood losses with just one hit. I mean, yeah, it does go with the whole Guts theme, cause in the show, he is just ripping people in half, sending blood flying everywhere. Am I mad or upset about this? Absolutely not. It makes the game so much more fun, and definitely a lot easier. I feel like this feature is meant to be in the game, but somebody let me know in the comment section down below if this is on purpose or not. Anyways, when you're selecting your character, I wouldn't say it matters a whole lot with who you pick, but to be on the safer side, start with the hero class, it just gives you the best stat spread for this build. If you are using something else, you can very easily take some points away from Vigor or Arcane. I kinda had some leftover points, so I just dumped them in there. When you are leveling up, I'd first get 31 strength and 12 dex. It's just the minimum requirements needed to wield a greatsword, and after, I would split my points between Vigor for health, strength for damage, and exactly 26 endurance to wear the most guts looking armor and still be able to fast roll. Once you've reached 75 strength, I would then put the leftovers into arcane to increase our bleed buildup. And you can see, we don't have nearly enough points to proc a blood loss with just one hit. To get this effect, let's start off with the weapon. So you already know we're using the greatsword, the iconic lookalike guts weapon. We're also going to be placing the bleed affinity on it cause we need some source of bleed buildup to proc a blood loss. Also it has a B scaling and strength which is how I'm able to keep this a strength focus build with bleed just being a nice secondary thing. Before I continue on, here's an interesting fact about today's sponsor, Hero Wars. They have tons of different and unique characters you can use ranging from cyborgs, aliens, vampires, even furries won't be disappointed. My personal choice is the Chaba, but I have no doubt you'll find your own personal favorite champion in Hero Wars today. With the bleed affinity placed on it, just normally swinging it around won't proc a blood loss with one hit. Additionally, we're going to need the Ash of War Bragart's Roar, increasing our physical damage by 10%, adding an extra 5 levels to strength, increasing our damage negation by 10%, increasing our stamina recovery speed as well, and altering our heavy attacks to do more damage. And this is also where I messed up. In most of the footage, you can see I'm using the Ash of War Warcry. Literally, just the worst version of Bragart's Roar. It gives a smaller damage buff, no increased protection or stamina recovery speed, and it lasts for less time. Just letting you guys know why if you see me using another Ash of War. Anyways... Now this is where things don't make sense at all in the best way possible. Like when you wake up 5 minutes before your alarm clock goes off and you're full of energy. When you do a fully charged heavy attack after using the Ash of War, you somehow stack up a bit more than 2 times the amount of bleed buildup that's on the weapon. Here, take a look for yourselves. Margit, the first boss in the game has a total of 316 resistance to blood loss until he splooges. The sword we're using only has 137 buildup to it, so it should take 3 hits to make him bleed. Nope, just slam that sword down once and watch the blood fly out of him. That one attack somehow built up more than 316 blood loss. And this is exactly what I was talking about. I don't know if this is supposed to happen or not, but what I do know is, I am very happy with how it works. So not only is our heavy attack going to do a lot of damage itself, but it's also topped off with a nice blood loss. A strength focus build that can proc bleed with one hit. Sounds perfectly balanced to me. Continuing on, we do have one other weapon that we don't really use as an actual weapon, it's more for just buffing our character. The Highland Axe. It has this passive on it that increases the damage of all roar attacks by 10%. In other words, it increases the damage of our fully charged heavy attack. All you have to do is have this thing equipped in the second weapon slot and that's it. And since it's there, you can toss on the Ash of War Golden Vow to increase your damage and protection, so you can get a nice little 2 for 1 buff on the Axe. Finishing with the weapons, let's dive into the talismans. So first up, we're going to be using both the Roar Medallion and the Axe Talisman. They both combo together, basically doing the same thing in this setup. The Roar Medallion increases Roar attacks by 15%. Literally the same thing as the passive on the Axe, but better. 
then the Axe Talisman increases the damage of charged attacks by 10%. So just fully charge your heavy attacks and you'll get the damage buff from both of these talismans. It cannot get more straightforward than that. Next, the third talisman we use is the Lord of Blood's Exultation, increasing our damage by 20% whenever a blood loss happens near us. And honestly, I found this talisman to be really fitting for a guts theme build, cause again, he's just known for killing tons of people spilling blood everywhere, and it seemed like he would get stronger with the more he did. But anyways, the main reason for the Lord of Blood's Exultation is cause of how quickly, easily, and consistently we can proc blood losses, like this should always be active during boss fights with no problems at all. And for the final talisman, you'll want to run the Great Jar's Arsenal. It's going to increase our max equip load by 19%. If you don't get this, you're going to be putting quite a few points into Endurance, which is something I'd like to avoid, because we are using a very heavy sword, an axe, and medium armor. Fast rolling is kind of a must for any build. With the talismans out of the way, let's take a look at the flask. Now there's only one tier that's an absolute must, the Spiked Crack tier. It does the same thing as the Axe Talisman, increasing our charged attacks by 15%. Except this lasts for 3 minutes, still more than enough time to clap whoever you're going up against. Then the other one isn't as important but I do find it to be pretty helpful. The Opaline Hard Tier. This one increases our physical damage negation by 15% for 3 minutes as well. Now it gets a fair amount of use cause when you do a fully charged heavy attack, it takes quite a bit of time to get that sword moving. So there is a decent chance you're going to end up trading hits. Not the worst thing to happen cause luckily the armor we use does offer a good amount of protection as well. Speaking of that, to match the look you'll want to grab the knight's cavalry set and use the chest and legs. You could get away with the gauntlets as well but I found the drake knight gloves to look better. One saves you from more work, the other one looks better. Then for the headpiece you have two options, you could go with Malachith's helmet or the black wolf's mask. I mean there's also the option of using no helmet if you want to customize your character to have the same face as him. Little bit difficult, but there's videos out there that tell you the exact ratios to use to match his physical appearance. Now the last thing for this build is the spirit summoning you can use. Normally, I like to use the mimic tier just because it's the best out there, hands down. But I've had more fun using either the mausoleum or Radon soldier ashes. They just fit the guts theme, like entering a huge fight and summoning the band of the hawks to fight along with you. Are they the best spirit ashes? No. Are they the worst? No, they're kind of smack down in the middle. They'll definitely help out in fights, but they won't single-handedly carry them like the Mimic tier does. Also, they cost the exact amount of mana we have, so it just fits in perfectly. Before I show you guys the locations of all the items, starting with the easiest ones and working our way to the hardest. By the way, Hero Wars is a world of 6 unique modes and 100 million players. You can play alone or with friends. Also, be sure to try out the Titans mode and become a legend by playing Hero Wars now. So, starting off with the Hero class, this is where you can make your character's facial features look like guts. I skipped it cause I know I'm going to be using the helmet the entire time, and you can also change his facial features whenever you want, so it's not a huge issue. Once we're in the game, the first thing we're going to want to grab is our horse and the spirit calling bell for summonings. So for the horse, reach the gate front side of grace, rest there, and Milena should speak to you giving you the spectral steed and the ability to level up. I bequeath to you this ring. Next, head back the way you came to the Church of Ella. You'll have to rest and then teleport back to the same site of Grace in there. It's going to reset the time to night so Rena spawns in for you to talk to her. After doing so, she gives you the Spirit Calling Bell and the Lone Wolf Ashes. Now we can actually start putting the build together with the first item being the Roar Medallion. You'll have to reach the Limgrave Tunnels and work your way through it. At the end of it, there will be a Stone Digger troll who you'll have to kill to be rewarded it. He doesn't have a lot of poise, so I'd recommend doing fully charged heavy attacks to bring him down easily. Mm -hmm. 
The second item we can get is the Ash of War Warcry. Reach the gate front and make your way towards the War Master's Shack. You'll have to buy it from the Knight Brunel who sells it for 800 runes. That boss you just killed gives you 1800, so don't spend all of them leveling up. And very close by is the Ash of War Golden Vow. You'll have to kill a mounted knight that roams around the cliff. It's even easier than that troll fight, and for the time being, you can toss this on any other weapon you may come across just to use the buff. Moving on, we can go and grab the Greatsword. This one, we're gonna have to go to Kaylee to get it. Luckily, you don't have to fight any enemies here, in fact it's better to avoid them cause we're not strong enough yet. Anyways, you'll find the sword on the back of a carriage in a chest. Since we're somewhat in the area, we can grab the right half of the Deskus Medallion. You'll have to reach Fort Ferrith. Luckily, you can cut straight across instead of running all the way around. And even when you're in the fort, you can run past all the enemies. We just need this to access some areas later on. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and 5 awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars right away? Too slow? The answer is in the link in the description down below. Play Hero Wars now! Next item we can get is the Flask. This one, you'll have to head back towards Limgrave. If you rested at every site of grace that you saw along the way, which I really hope you did cause I don't see why you wouldn't, you could TP to the Summon Water Village outskirts and make your way down the cliff. Look for a bunch of ledges that are sticking out and you can make your way down with them. With this, we can now grab the spiked crack tier which is just south of the church. There's a few items in this area for us to get which is really nice just saving us some time from running around so much. You'll find the tier on an altar next to the minor erd tree. Then, just across from us is the Axe Talisman. It'll be underground in the Mistwood Ruins. There's also a massive bear that I wouldn't recommend fighting or he'll just toss you around like a toy. Fortunately, he's an optional boss so you could go back to him anytime you want. Next up is grabbing the other half of the Dectus Medallion. Follow the path going south towards the castle and make your way through it. You'll find it in a chest at the top of the tallest tower. Now, since we have a good amount of equipment, I'd recommend rune farming to level your character up a bit. There's tons of methods out there for doing it fast, so it doesn't really matter which one you go with. Personally, I would just level up my guy enough so I could use the sword and have a few extra points in health as well. Nothing too crazy, there's going to be much better farming methods later on in the game. Actually, you'll want to farm a little bit more. Exactly 8,000 runes more to buy two Stoneward keys. You can get them both from the vendor at the round table, which is really nice. With these, we can be on our way to get the Great Jar's arsenal. You'll want to teleport back to the church and make your way back to the Minor Ur Tree, except this time you'll go inside the building there and take the elevator down. Now we're gonna have to make our way through it and get to the other side of it just to take another elevator that'll bring us up. There's no mandatory enemies you have to fight in this area so you can run past all of them. Once you're there, this is what requires the two keys, just to unlock the lift. After you reach the top, you basically just follow the pathway all the way to the end until you reach the Colosseum. There's gonna be some giant archers shooting at you but they're not too hard to dodge so don't worry about them too much. And once you get to the Colosseum, there will be some red summoning signs on the ground. You'll have to kill three invaders, which then you'll be rewarded with the talisman. If these guys are too tough for you, just farm for more runes and upgrade your weapon. 
Or you could come back to this area later on since we don't have all four talisman slots available to us just yet. So if that is the case, we're going to need to head into Stormvale Castle to get the Highland Axe. You can teleport to the Stormhill Shack site of Grace and make your way from there. The journey is very straightforward and you don't have to go off path at all. Once you reach the room with a grafted scion in it, the axe will be laying underneath the painting for you to pick up. Just like before, this boss is optional so you can take it and run away. Next item we can get is the actual Ash of War we're going to use, Bregart's Roar. Keep going through the castle and after you kill Godric you'll be able to access Lyranny of the Lakes. You could leave the castle and go all the way around but he's not a difficult fight at all. After doing so, make your way down the hill towards the Boil Prawn Shack site of Grace. There's an NPC there you have to kill to get the Ash of War and it's the same thing as a Godric fight. It should be very easy. You can send him flying into the air with the Ash of War war cry until he drops. Then you take the Ash of War off the Iron Ball weapon you picked up and place it on the sword. With that out of the way, we can now get Radon's Soldier Spirit Ashes. First thing we're going to need is the Academy Key. You can grab it from behind a sleeping dragon. Take it, run away, and head towards the Academy. This just lets you get through the barrier. We don't spend any time here at all, we kind of cut through another barrier that brings us to the Bellum Highway. Follow the path all the way to the end where you'll find the Grand Lift of Dectus. This is now going to bring you to the Altus Plateau area. There's a lot of jumping around in this part, but I promise it's very simple. Once you've reached the Altus Plateau area, rest at the nearest site of Grace. This is going to activate the Radon Festival, allowing you to fight him. Then you're going to want to TP all the way back to Kaled and head to the Red Main Castle. You don't have to go through it, there will be a portal at the bridge you can go through that'll bring you instantly to the end of it to fight Radon. It's going to be very difficult so I'd recommend leveling up a bit more and when you are in the fight, you'll heavily want to rely on the summonings there on the ground. They're going to take away his aggro and do good amounts of damage, so try to get a few hits in there when he's not focusing on you. After beating him, you're going to want to head to the War Dead Catacombs. This is where you're going to find Radon's Soldier Ashes. Just follow exactly where I go and try to ignore the enemies because, again, they're also very strong as well. Now that we got the ashes, we can go and grab the Opaline Hard Tier, the second tier to the flask. You'll want to TP back to Fort Ferrith, the place we got the other half of the medallion from, and make our way towards the Minor Ur Tree close by. You'll have to kill a Putrid Avatar boss to be rewarded it. This fight's also going to be really difficult, similar to getting the Great Jar's Arsenal, so you can either grind for more runes and level your character up a bit, or just come back to this area later on since it's not a vital part to this build. Leaving this, we now have access to getting the bleed affinity on the sword. What you want to do is reach the Starfall Crater on the map which appears after defeating Radon. TP to the nearest site of grace you have and make your way down it. When you keep going through the area after you beat the Mimic tier boss which is one of the easiest fights in the game, Make sure you unequip your weapons before going in. You'll want to head all the way to this site of grace and follow exactly where I go from here.
Next on the list is the Lord of Blood's Exultation. First, you'll want to teleport back to the Altus Plateau site of Grace. From here, follow exactly where I marked on the map. It'll bring you to a Draconic Tree Sentinel for you to fight. If you stay on your horse constantly and hit the side of him that his shield is on, the fight becomes extremely easy. Just make sure to constantly apply pressure to that side. Now you'll be able to enter Liondel. I'd recommend just wandering around the area, there's tons of different enemies in here that drop a decent amount of runes as well. But when you're done exploring, you'll eventually find yourself at the Avenue Balcony site of Grace. From here, follow where I go. You'll end up jumping down a well and making your way into the subterranean shunning grounds. You have to go through this area to get the Lord of Blood's Exultation. We're at the halfway point being at the underground roadside site of grace. You'll just do the same thing here again. Follow exactly where I go and this will bring you to the dungeon you'll have to complete to be rewarded with the Lord of Blood's Exultation. Now this next part, you'll want to pay very close attention. The dungeon can be very confusing on where to go, so if you need to slow the video down to keep track of where you're going, definitely do so. By the end of it, you'll pull down a lever that will open up the door at the beginning, allowing you to fight the boss to then be rewarded with the talisman. When you enter the room, I'd recommend taking out the dogs first cause they can be very annoying during that fight. Then when it's just you and him, you can flip him around easily, even proccing blood losses. With this here, all that's left for us to get is the armor, starting with the Knight's Cavalry set. So first thing we're going to have to do is kill Margit in this area. TP back to the Avenue Balcony site of Grace. From here, run down towards the Dragon Wing and climb up it. The rest of the way is very straightforward to the next site of Grace. From here, we're gonna head up the tree and avoid all of these guys cause we're gonna have to fight a version of Godfrey once we've reached the top. And just like before, if you feel like this fight's too tough, level up your character, weapon, and even summoning. You have the Sight of Grace activated so you can come back to it anytime you feel ready. Side note, before you take this fight, switch the affinity on your weapon to heavy to get more physical damage. Since it's like the ghost version of him, we're not going to be able to proc blood losses, so having some extra damage wouldn't be a bad thing. Then from this side of Grace, you'll want to go outside and climb up the tree. Continue down the path and fight a Black Knife Assassin. After you beat him, there will be another side of Grace to rest at, and then you can fight Margit. Oh. 
Once you beat him, Milena will then give you a medallion that will give you access to the next area we need to get to to get the armor. Like before, TP back to the avenue balcony side of grace. Go up the stairs, make a left, and just go straight all the way. Eventually, you'll find another elevator that will bring you up and, again, go straight ahead. This is going to take you to the Forbidden Lands, but just cut straight through it to get to the other end for another lift. Never realize how many elevators there was in this game. Anyways, once you get up the lift, you're going to have to reach the back of the mountaintops of the Giants area, so there's a lot of traveling involved. Once you got this side of grace, you're going to want to follow the path I have laid out. I'm not going to show my guy running around the whole path because I'd like to keep the video relatively short even though I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, after you reach the outside of the castle, you're going to have to go through it and defeat the boss in there to get the left half of the secret medallion. Next, we're going to have to go back to Lyurny of the Lakes or more exactly the Boil Prawn Shack side of grace. From here, head underneath the hill and keep going until you find a pathway bringing you up. Eventually, you'll find a site of grace and from here, follow where I go. You'll have to kill a perfumer and then hit this jar a few times. A dude will transform from it, giving you the other half of the secret medallion. Finally, we can actually get the armor now. TP back to the grand lift, but this time select the other option when you're about to use the lift. It'll now use a secret medallion and take you to the consecrated snowfields. From here, head to this area I have marked on the map. You'll have to defeat two cavalry knights in order for the armor to be dropped. When you are fighting them, you'll want to aggro them one at a time, and just like the Draconic Tree Sentinel, you'll want to hit them on the side they have no weapon. When you do that, there's a much better chance of them not hitting you in exchange. Now we can move on to the last two items on the list, the Drake Knight Gauntlets. For these, we're going to have to reach the Crumbling Ferrum Azul. To do that, you'll have to kill the Fire Giant in the mountaintops of the Giants area. TP to the Freezing Lake Site of Grace and follow the path I have laid out. The fight itself is really easy as long as you aim for his ankle. You do extra damage when hitting it and after you kill him, you head up the hill to the huge forge and talk to Milena at the Site of Grace there. She'll then teleport you to the Crumbling Ferrum Azul. What you're going to want to do is make your way through the entire place until you reach beside the Great Bridge, Site of Grace. From here, follow exactly where I go and you'll get the Drake Knight Gauntlets. And for the final item, Malekith's Helm, you're going to have to go back to the Beside the Great Bridge Site of Grace and make a right when you go up the stairs. After you kill the Draconic Knight, which is optional, you'll then have to kill Malekith. After he dies, you can then buy his helmet at the round table.
Well guys, that covers everything for today's build. Before I end the video off, I do want to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope I see you all in the next one.